Hey guys, welcome back to Kumasawa Reviews. We've got another mecha related product, Gundam Unicorn, the Kshatriya. This iteration is from a third party. I don't believe that this is a licensed product. A lot of places that sell this, like Show's East Store for example, where I got mine, are just plain calling it the Steel Legend Kshatriya. But on the box, as you can see, comes in two boxes, it says Steel Legend Rise Project, and I know it's coded SL. 001 or SL01. So I think Rise Project is the actual name of it, not Kshatriya. But at the same time, Kshatriya, it's not. I don't think it's something that can be copywritten. And if you look, it has it all throughout the temples and whatnot too. So I'm not sure on that one. But the word Kshatriya, I believe it just means like noble warrior or something to that effect. So looking at the product here, again, it's a metal build style product. What that means is that the frame here, it's about four pounds, so heavy guy, all die cast all throughout. You've got these joints that are die cast that hold the binders and whatnot. And we're going to get to that binder down there in a second. The height of this guy, we're not going to go to the point of that fin there. We'll just say about nine inches actual head to toe. And as you can see, again, it comes in two boxes. So it comes disassembled. There's the main body, and then you have these binders in here, as well as these, I'll call them powders, maybe, on the shoulders, these big block pieces. These are pretty simple to attach. So you see it, you can kind of push the shoulder down, fit that in, and then you have to clip it down there's like a u-type clip or c-clip that it just presses into and then it stays and everything like that so once you see it in hand you can get it this piece here i don't know if i can necessarily get it off it fits on pretty tight um i will say though it has two pieces that peg in just remember that it's a diagonal that it pegs in at. That threw me through a loop until I actually looked at the grooves inside of the die cast piece that it goes on to. And then of course there are the binders themselves. This is a good opportunity to actually look at the binders. All right, so there are these pieces that attach on each side and I'm sure it's more for breakages that these weren't just molded on in the first place, but you know, it's pretty blatant. The larger side is the top. And there are four of each for the four binders. Uh oh, let me see where this pegs in. And they place, fit in the place pretty good, pretty snug. Just have to find the right angle to press them in at, at the first place. So, with the binders, move this guy back. As you can see, pretty big. Lengthwise, they're about 11 inches long a piece. Dike S arms. So, the whole thing. friction joint there. This is a ratchet joint and there's actually a button that moves the main piece up and down as my dogs are barking at nine o'clock at night. All right. On the bottom there are of course is funnels. And what's neat about these is there are six times four 24 total so six go in each one they just peg in but if you look I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera try to zoom in as much as possible but you could see they have a Greek letter as well as a number so Greek letters alpha beta gamma delta and then they're numbered one through six so I actually once I found that out I have to take them all out and you know get them all together in order and stuff you don't have to they all look exactly the same but I mean it like that all right and they do 
each have these arms that extend out from them. All right. Can rotate, rotate that. And then it has three fingers on each arm that are movable. And we'll do more with the poses and stuff like that when we get to that. But I kind of want to show you how these works. This opens up. And you could actually extend this out more, but you have to take some of these funnels out first, because obviously they're gonna block it. I'm just kind of twisting them out. And as you can see, they fit in pretty snug. And this goes out pretty far. And once you do that, you can fit a couple of them back in. That kind of deal. Another aspect of the binders I wanted to go over is the blast effects. You can already see one's in. So, okay. Each one has two sides and a middle. And when it comes to the two side ones, which are the longer flames, kinda, well, I could just hold them up next to each other. Here's a side flame. Here's a middle flame. You can see the middle flames thicker, shorter. But if we zoom in, let's see if we can't focus. That says R right there. So each one of these is labeled like left and right. So left side right side it doesn't matter I've mixed them up and they've went on just fine but the only thing is one side has an indent into it and that's the side that goes on the inside so this is the left side these are spring loaded so just get them down sometimes you'll hear a click sometimes you won't it's like a soft ratchet but get the middle one on and they stay in pretty snug And then the right side, so those are the blast effects. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm going ahead, I'm reattaching this piece. It's easier for me to make sure that it's lined up right before I put it on, like so. I wonder why, okay. Make sure it's in the right place, and then it just slides on, all right? So it slides on, and then there's this point where it gets really firm, and that's where you can tell it's on right. And then the shoulders, you just kind of make sure, make sure that this is, press the button here. There we go. Just had to make sure it's locked in place. And from there, just looking at the accessories, all right, so you can see two sword handles, two beam blades, all right? Additional hands, two open hands, and then two to hold the swords. It's weird with the handles. So they have these little pegs. Each one has one on each side, but they don't peg into anywhere on the rise project itself so i don't know what's supposed to be done i've scoured the internet looked at pictures i have not seen the swords holstered or stored anywhere so if you guys know where that's supposed to go if it's supposed to go anywhere let me know in the comments of course these are the blast effects so four because each one only has one middle and then eight of the side pieces since there are two sides on each binder there's one more assembly piece that i forgot it's these pieces around the Around the knees it's pretty straightforward what goes where one on each side there's a peg there's a slit slit I believe it would be called and they just clip in in there hold on really well but occasionally like if I'm doing some heavy play or posing and things like that I've had one come off but they pop right back on pretty easy stuff so we're going to go ahead and look at the articulation on this guy. And, you know, it's pretty standard in terms of metal builds and things like that. So he's got a ball joint where the clavicle, or the neck meets the clavicle there. If you can see it underneath. 
In fact, I'll try to zoom in, get the camera up some, so you guys can see it. All right, so you see how that neck, the neck itself, is going up and down, and there's some wobble wobble. And jeez. This piece, I've thought about gluing it, but it stays on pretty well. That crust there, so I'm not too worried about it. But just watch out for that. If you see that part on the ground or this piece, then of course, you know where they go now. So, okay. The head itself on a ball joint, pretty tight. Mine is at least, was kind of hard to press down. Now, I haven't had any issues, but I've noticed the front of the mask there, kind of pointy. So, there's a little bit of wiggle room in the chest, but just watch it, because it looks like it has potential to cross paths with that, even though this is a pretty flexible plastic in itself. So, lots of up and down movement and things like that. And if I would have known how tight it was going to be, I maybe would have put some shock oil on the ball joint before I press the head on. It's on so tightly now that I'm kind of afraid to take it off. I'm sure I could if I wanted to, but it's just it doesn't, the risk reward right now doesn't seem worth it. So, okay. Taking this back down. So we looked at the neck. Let's go ahead and look at the arms. Now, you've got this separate piece for the binders to go plug into. One, two, three, four. And I just took the binders off for the sake of you guys being able to see what I'm doing because obviously, as you saw, they're huge. So, we've got some forward movement as well as backwards or backwards and forward. It seems like it should do a 360, but this is about where I get before it gets really tight. Try the other side here. And it's about the same. So I'm not going to mess with it too crazy much. Let's see, I can go back there. I do wish that it had rotation individual from these binder holders here. It does not, though. I've tried just moving the arms by themselves, and it's tight to the point where you can tell that it's all supposed to move together. Now, with the shoulder holders, this piece moves in and out. To allow for that outward swing, pretty cool stuff. 360 bicep swivel. These are double jointed biceps, so you have one right there, and then that nice round thing with bobber. All right, so the wrist, they do have the ability to rock back and forth. It's just a peg that it pegs into, like standard metal belts from Bandai. But with these big armor pieces over the forearm, you don't get a lot of that back and forth movement, but you can still see it there. And of course the rotation can technically do a 360, but again, the armor kind of blocks it. It actually does have ab crunch, so back, forth, not a ton. I guess it'd be more of a back arch than ab crunch because that's the extent of it going forward. It's not really crunched in, but yeah. The waist can actually full 360 with ease. Now in terms of the crotch skirt, these pieces move up. These can move to the side. This can move back a good ways. Now let's get those shoulders up and make sure that you guys can see it through the camera there. Make sure we're focused as well. And really tight hip joints, so let's of course. And I'll put that piece back in a second. That's my bad for the way that I braced it. Didn't realize that was a separate piece there. So up, good frontward swing. All right. And they're not uncomfortably tight, I should note that. Now the backward swing's pretty good, but it is blocked by that big old back skirt there. We're gonna take a look at the side, from this side. 
Let's see if we can actually get him to balance. I would never try this with the binders on, by the way, so. Alright, I mean, there we go. Not bad, not bad. But good amount of outward swing, forward, back swing. Overall, just good stuff. Big, huge die cast knee joints as well. Looks to be double jointed. Yep. And it can go pretty far back. Let's actually get this hip forward. Let's see if we can. Yep. Quite a bit. And that wasn't even the extent of it. I'm not saying it could go back much more, but I think you get the gist from right there. And that's what I'm saying with these. And I'm glad that they made them so that they do come off. Because with how tight the joints are on this thing, it's for the better because you gotta give it a pretty tight grip. And I'd rather have stuff pop off and be able to come back on pretty easy rather than, you know, just being broken. So let's take a look at that piece because you guys might have the same problem that popped off when I was posing. Then we'll look at the ankles. Looks like it slides in right there. Oh, it actually clips in. So, there we go. Right there. No glue, nothing like that. Alright, now looking at these ankles, these pieces actually do flex a bit, which is cool. Oh, well. If you ever need to get to the screws, there you go. So, in fact, we're going to leave that off. It just pops right back on. There's a ball joint right here that you can see. But good ankle rock. And you can see the amount of die cast through here, too. I'm actually... It's one of the weirdest mistakes to happen because it's actually beneficial to this review. So, no foot movement. No front of the foot moving back. Nothing like that, but okay ankle tilt, I would say. Well, let's make sure that piece pops back on as easy as it looks. Or we're talking about how good of a mistake that is. Yeah, right there. And let's go ahead. We will place one of the handles into one of the swords right here. Right here. And I'm not going to lie, I like to measure things, so let's see how long these beams are. The beam itself looks to be about nine and a half inches, total 11. This just pops off. Now this forearm armor comes on and off, so watch for that, kind of brace it while you're doing that. Try to get that centered while popping the hand on. Now, I can't say it's like this for all copies, but the rock feature of my wrist rotates pretty easily, so it's hard to find that center at times. There we go. That's that. Let's get some poses and get you guys on your way. You know what, rather than even go through a million poses with this thing, I think this kind of sums it up, shows off some of the articulation, the gimmicks of the binders and things like that. So yeah, I really like how this one came out in terms of showing, you know, you guys what it can really do. Again, this has been Steel Legends SL001 Rise Project also known as the Gachatria. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, like, share, subscribe, and check out the full written breakdown and gallery on kumasel.com. Before I get you out of your way, I'm actually gonna put this piece here, which popped off on there, so you can look like he's supposed to look. You didn't see that, but anyway, I'll see you guys next review.